So I'm really excited about this product. It's a CAN to USB converter. Basically, it means that I'll be able to configure and control lots of different microcontrollers over the same CAN bus on my PC. So I'm probably going to be starting to write scripts in Python to do this. So it is a USB CAN interface. It's done by JBR Engineering. It costs about £45. And it comes with the Candlelight firmware already installed. Um, because of that, it should show up as a CAN network device on my Linux machine. So this board is typically used to debug the CAN bus in cars, but I'll be using it for robotics. A nice USB-C on one end and a CAN bus on the other end. But before I can use it, I have to do one of my favourite things, cable management. Um, so it came with a um, one of those 2.54 connectors, so I need to get a JST PH. 2.0 um, connector onto it because that's what the uh, the VESC microcontroller that I'm using needs. Um, so that's all done now. So the board itself looks really well made and it's pretty. There's four dip switches at the top. The bottom one's probably the most interesting. You can uh, turn off the terminating CAN resistor, the 120 ohm resistor, um, if your bus has already got two. Uh, you've got an STM32 chip. Uh, there's quite a few little pins there to um, maybe to test that with your oscilloscope, see if things are working, and of course your USB-C connector. I bought this device to help uh, test the CAN bus on my hover chair project. So here's my uh, dual VESC, it can drive two motors. Um, so you basically got an SD-Link uh, port on each side and a USB for doing debug serial, that sort of thing. Um, and this I'm using for the hall sensors. Um, what else have we got? There's a serial connection to a FlySky remote controller and a um, I2C going off to an MPU6050 for balancing. Um, and then on the other side it basically repeats. So here's the hall sensors again. Uh, there's a few bits and bobs at the top like a power on off switch and there's a cable here that you could attach to a servo, um, simple servo. Um, if you wanted to control the speed like that. So here's the CAN board and there's two ports so yeah I could just push it in. The two sides are, are even though they're separate microcontrollers um, they're connected by CAN bus as well so I've essentially got three devices connected to the CAN bus now. So now comes the exciting bit where I get to try my um, my USB CAN converter. Um, We've got this set up, it's powered, and if I leave it like this, basically one side is connected to the, um, the serial sort of wireless thing, and the other side is receiving CAN bus messages. Um, so that's why both motors are, are, are moving. Um, so this is connected now. You can see the lights are on, which basically means if I do LS USB, um, you can see yeah, um, JBR Engineering Entry GSUB. And I think this one's related. I'm not quite sure why it sometimes shows up too. Um, but yeah, it's it's up. And similarly, if I do IP address, it'll show the CAN zero. Its link is there. But it says the state is down. So um, how do I change that? This is a nice. Um, yeah, guide. It's actually for um, Raspberry Pi. I haven't mentioned really, but I'm using on Ubuntu here, so this guide is somewhat Linux um, specific. Um, but a lot of you have got Raspberry Pis or Jetson Nanos, I imagine. So you could try this out with one of those. So um, yeah, I need to set the bit rate before I bring the CAN bus up. So I'll do that. My microcontrollers are set to Talk at 500,000 bits per second, and then I want to bring my link up. So, IP link set up CAN zero. Done that, and now again back to look at my addresses and links. So, you can see the state has now gone up. And if I want to, I can can dump out these messages. So each message that's sent across the canvas will now appear 
on my screen. So and you can see it. So what's this saying? CAN0 is the device as far as the Linux box is concerned. 001 is the identifier that I'm using at the moment for my setting the velocity. It's saying it's four bytes long and these bytes represent a float. So you can see that's zero and I guess this is close to zero. I'm not quite sure how floats get converted into bytes. Um, so that's done. Um, what I want to do now is show you that you can actually record these. And this is pretty cool. Um, so minus L, not only does it record it to a file, um, you can see there, um, but it's also doing it in a sort of non-human readable form or less. It's got timestamps in it basically. So, okay, um, so I will stop that. Should have it's going to be a bit of a delay on this. So now if I want to play this back, minus I, can dump, here we go. So yeah, um, that worked. Um, and I think I can do, if I, if I was to cat this, this file, see what it looks like. You, um, oops, cat I meant to do, not can. Um, I can, I think I can take one of these and call can send, which will basically send that, um, probably send a quite a slow velocity. Um, why did that not work? Oh, space, do I need a space? Yep, and then change these to all zeros to send it a zero velocity so there's quite a bit you can do and obviously um, you can write python scripts which uh, talk to this and perhaps start automating it um, maybe you'd use this to do a bit of inverse kinematics and uh, control a series of uh, joints um, to get something moving um, so that's my guide um, i really like this uh, it basically worked first time um, i didn't read any instructions, um, just uh, seemed to work. I had played around with um, virtual can on Linux before, so I'd kind of got some of, some software sort of already installed and I kind of knew what I was doing. Um, but very impressed with JBR, JBR engineering. So um, yeah, definitely good buy. So if you like this video, please subscribe and like. Um, I'm soon gonna be turning this upside down and it'll be balancing itself and I'm going to sit on it and probably hurt myself um, so you get a chance to to watch that in the next month or so.